Well, welcome back everybody. Uh, did some driveway Jenga. Got the uh, silver 330Ci in the garage. Uh, today we're gonna go into the belly of the beast, fix hopefully the last of the leaks. Our main course is going to be this oil pan gasket that's uh, dripping pretty good. Uh, but as always, there's while you're in there's when we're done, obviously we're gonna need to do a full oil change. So I got seven quarts, Castrol GTX full synthetic, 5W30. I always pick up a couple cans of brake clean while you're out. It's usually on sale. Uh, you got an oil level sensor and the oil level O-ring. Uh, those are OEM Hella units. I'll put links in the description for everything that we're putting in. And that's a cure that uh, amber oil light after startup. It's just a typical issue that we have with E46s that uh, sensor fails and you get the uh, low oil level sensor light to come on a new man filter with the o-rings for the oil filter housing we've got new engine mounts new transmission mounts and a new rear diff mount uh, these are all uh, lemp order uh, there's tons of options out there guys whatever your flavor is i prefer the oe feel so i choose lemp order uh, people go solid bushings they go poly they go aftermarket white box uh, this car is just too nice i want to keep it feeling OE fresh and then we also have some steering rack boots that we got to put on uh, this should all get done just in a couple hours this shouldn't be too too bad uh, one thing that you will need in order to do this is a uh, engine support bracket uh, you can pick this up at uh, Arbor Freight there's the part number again I'll put that in the description uh, they're 80 bucks or something like that they come on sale all the time and uh, basically you need to support the engine and we use this uh, engine lift hook point right here S straddles the uh, strut towers and supports the engine uh, because we have to actually drop the subframe in order to get this oil pan off so a uh, couple things we'll need to get out of the way uh, up top is get this uh, air intake system out and the uh, upper intake boot most likely because uh, so we need to free up this oil uh, dipstick tube because that goes right into the pan. We don't want to be messing about with that uh, as we're trying to fit the oil pan back. So, but we need to get to the bolt that holds that in place. And uh, it's usually easiest if you get this intake tube out of the way. So we'll get the air box out, just a couple tens. Uh, already got the rivets out for that. So then we can get her up in the air using the new uh, quick jacks that I picked up. You see them here. This is just one side. It's got a nice quick release. Uh, connection tie it into the pump and up she goes so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start getting the engine brace set up uh, then we'll get her up in the air drain the oil let that drain pretty good while we work on uh, getting everything prepped to drop that subframe and I'll walk you through what what that entails all right we got her uh, all set up with the engine support bar so we just need to use this lift point. So you only need one of the uh, support rods. Didn't need the chains that came with it because it, it's so close. Uh, got it mounted up on the fenders. Uh, just a quick tip on this. Try to leave everything loose until you got it where you want it because uh, you actually have some rake with this uh, inner fender area here. So you want to try to get the top bar fairly level. So you want to leave these bolts uh, a little loose until you get it situated, just take your time, get it set up again. We want safety. We don't want this engine to fall down on our heads. Uh, we got the quick jacks up. We're just on the first locks here. Um, the issue I have is we don't have enough clearance clearance. So uh, to start, I think on the first jack or the first uh, lock points is gonna be fine. I can always lower the hood. I can put something over this so we don't dent and hurt our hood. Um, if we need a little bit more room, but just a reminder of uh, what we're working with down here. You can see how greasy grimy she is. We'll clean a lot of that up um, as we go along. I was gonna try to pressure wash it, but that just makes it such a mess. I don't really like washing that stuff down into the yard, the sewer, the street, all that stuff. So we'll just swipe it up real good, dispose of it properly. We need to take the support plate off. It's just 16 mils. 
all the way around. There's, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight of them. We'll drop that down. Then we can, uh, you know, start getting in here, moving stuff out of our way. We got to disco the uh, rear control arm bushings so they hang. Uh, we need to undo a steering shaft uh, so the rack can come down with the uh, with the subframe as well. We need to take the power steering uh, pump off. So I'm probably gonna, I think I'll actually take that clutch fan off real quick, get the belt off, get that out of our way. That way we can take the uh, power steering pump out of the way easier. Uh, we just need to make some room here so, so we can get in here and work. I think we're okay with uh, this height for now. I, I do have a creeper that I just bought. That might make a little tough, but uh, just scooching under here, uh, we should be okay. So the first step, I'm just wipe at least the sway bar down so I'm not grabbing it and getting all gross. And then uh, we'll get that plate down and drain the oil out so we can get as much of that out of our way as well. All right, well, we got our uh, up in our teeth a little uh, higher. We got it on the second locks. What it did, I just uh, went out in the yard, found one of the... Uh, I just found one of Ollie's tennis balls, cut a hole in it, put that on there. As long as we're not bouncing up and down on the hood and being crazy, it should be fine. Plus, you got the padding for the under hood protection. Uh, you see we've got our uh, reinforcement plate down. We've got our control arms unbolted. They're all 16s, just like the, the plate. So I just went ahead and pulled them. And uh, just about ready to drop some oil. So let me get you set up. We'll... We'll drain that. We're probably going to make a mess because I'm up in the air a bit, but we'll make do. So we got our 17 mil on the drain plug and there we go. I broke her loose. Now let's see if I got the angle of dangleage right. So we actually hit the pan. And there she goes. Yeah, hit the pan, but uh, splash on my fingers. So there's a little bit of cleanup. Not too bad. Oil looks pretty clean. Not seeing any uh, flakes in it. We'll let that dry, and then uh, I'm gonna just clean up down here a little bit. Uh, so it looks like we are actually gonna need some control arm bushings. This uh, passenger side one, it's pretty floppy, and it rotates a bit. So we're gonna need a couple lollipops. I think the control arms are good. I'll check them out again. I mean, we're gonna button this back up um, when we're done. Run it, make sure it's got no leaks. I'll order the lollipops. This way the car is still drivable. Um, and I also actually have someone really interested in this. So uh, that the car may be uh, sold here shortly. Got some progress here. I got uh, our power steering pump dropped down. It's all greasy gross. So we're definitely gonna clean that before it goes back up. Sway bars down. Got the uh, control arms dismounted in the back like I showed you before. And we got the steering shaft coupler out uh, which you really can't see under here but uh, that's all disconnected uh, engine mounts are unbolted from underneath so we're pretty much just ready I gotta throw a jack underneath uh, the subframe and then start lowering uh, or undoing the subframe to body bolts so there's just two on each side and they look like probably 19 mil so let me get my jack in place and we'll start uh, lowering her down. All right, so let's uh, see if the subframe wants to come down. Start letting our floor jack down and engine should hopefully stay where it belongs. But we'll just go slow. I yeah, see the subframe moving, the engine staying put. That's good. Just again, want to go slow in case anything's binding up. There we go. Now we got our floor jack out of the way. Might be still stuck on the steering shaft over there a little bit. Um, but on that, yeah, I mean, look at all the room for activities now. We can get in there, we can uh, clean up the top of the steering rack. We can uh, get our new engine mounts in. In fact, let me, I wonder. I was driving around the other day and it had some good vibration. Well, these are actually pretty good. But uh, we'll compare them to the new. Uh, they're probably a bit collapsed. Uh, and we'll have to put those in before we go back up with the subframe, obviously. But uh, let me see if I can get it unstuck off that steering shaft. 
And then we can start undoing. There's just 10 mils all the way around. And on the back, there's two E10s. We need to make sure we get those. And then this oil pan is out. So we got all our bolts out. There's 25 uh, 10 mils all the way around and uh, a couple e torques on the back. So now you just need to try to break the seal and just start to move a little bit. You gotta be careful where you pry. I mean, this stuff's aluminum, so be careful. Just go easy, and especially if you're not 100% sure you got all the fasteners out. We don't wanna break anything. Like the back still feels a little taut. Yeah, so I, I missed the two bolts that are up in the bell housing area. That's why I didn't really want to comment. So I said, don't force it. Uh, you know, double check, make sure you got everything loose. You can see it already has dropped down. And I'm just trying to get, I put the pump back up there, out of my way. Now it's in my way, so we'll drop that down. And then I should be able to get her out. Down around the oil pump. There we go. I'm just gonna go back and fish it out around the uh, pickup tube. There we go. There we go. And now we're out. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Not. Uh, all right, so let's get the gasket out of the way and we can see uh the bottom end of the, the motor not quite as clean as up top but it's not crazy uh we'll take a look inside the oil pan here in a second uh i'm gonna get this stuff kind of out of the way so i can uh clean off the mating surfaces and let it kind of drip while we work on the oil pan itself all right so i got the oil pan out Here's the old gasket. I was hoping to see a date code on it. It's definitely old. So all this stuff is turning plastic. It should be rubber and a lot of it is missing. Uh, it came out with the oil pan. Here you can see the inside. I mean, other than just some normal stainage. I mean, I don't see any issues. There's no glitter or anything in, in the oil. Uh, so I'm gonna degrease this uh, both sides and then we'll put the uh, oil lovers, and then we'll put the oil level sensor on put our gasket on and uh, get ready for reinstallation. All right, so we got our oil pan all cleaned up, all brake cleaned off, all the grit and grime. It's nice and clean. I'll show you the inside here in a sec, but let's, uh, what we got on the table, let's change out this uh, oil level sensor. It's just three 10 mils. And as always, I just like to break everything free first. I'll tell you, I generally just use hand tools, but after doing 25 oil pan bolts, I kind of wish I had a electric ratchet. Maybe that's one of the things that I invest in here soon. But so obviously this is the bottom side of the oil pan. This is the oil level sensor. There we go. In there a little bit. You can see it uh, does have an O-ring in here and just mates up against here. So let me just clean that real quick. I just hit it with some brake clean just to make sure that we got all the goobers off. Make sure that we got everything off so it's nice and clean. This is the new sensor. I couldn't remember if it came with a seal or not. So we'll just hang on to that and we can use it on a different project if we need. Uh, and it just slides down on there and only fits one way. We can put our three tens back in. I'm sure there's a torque spec, but again, you know me, I don't like torquing down on aluminum, small hardware aluminum. It doesn't take much to tighten this anyway. You'll get kind of a mechanics feel. Just feel it when it gets snug, and that's all you need. All right, so that's all set. Now we need our new oil pan gasket. This is a new uh, Cortico oil pan gasket that we're going to put on. So here's the inside of the oil pan, cleaned up really nice. Uh, we don't care about the staining on the outside of this. We just want it smooth and flat. We can just go ahead and uh, put our new gasket on. All right, so now we got our new gasket on. Well, the problem is we've got a lot of monkeying around to get this in place and it's not going to be a whole lot of fun. So I'm going to again use a trick from M539 Restorations. 
and we're gonna zip tie it. Did it on the uh, valve cover gasket. It worked really well. So I'm gonna use it again here on this little pan gasket. You just obviously wanna make sure that the part that gets tight isn't anywhere that's gonna interfere uh, with it mating in place. Just put one there, one on the other side, and that should really be all that we need just to kind of hold it. Uh, I took a little bit of note trying to see, make sure that there's nothing gonna be in our way to cut these back out, but I'm just going like that. There's our tie in. All right, now if she's in place, she's not gonna move around. And as we put it in place and we're weebling, wobbling it to get it to in place, that gasket's not gonna fall out. So I'm just gonna go in, wipe down the mating surface on, underneath. There's a couple spots where we wanna put a little Rhinzo seal where the timing cover uh, meets the block. So let me go do that, wipe everything down real quick, and we'll shove this thing back in place. All right, so we got the oil pan all back together. It's all in, it needs one last little spray down with the brake clean. I went over the bolts twice just to double check. It's just good to make sure that uh, you didn't miss one. I uh, just did the same inside out crisscross pattern like I normally do. And we're pretty much ready. Throw some engine mounts on. Like I said, I just need to decrease this stuff a little bit. Put the new engine mounts in, get the subframe back up, and we're pretty much done with this job. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get things cleaned up a little bit. All right, so we're just about ready to put our engine mounts back in. So you can see these are the two that came out of it. They're still together, but this one you can see is definitely split, lost its oil. These are actually oil filled. Uh, some people think they aren't, but they actually are. You can see they're dripping out. That's not leak down that's the oil from inside but it's also interesting if you look you can see well that one's not too too collapsed but this one was that yeah you can see how much shorter that one is so it's a good thing that we're doing i think i'm going to try slapping these in on the subframe first rather than putting them in the in the engine mount brackets themselves and that's just mainly because there's a locating pin that way i know that these are in the right spot and i'm not fighting these plus there's a little bit of a slot in those engine mounts so i think that'll help put those up through so let me slap those in and we're going to be pretty much ready to put this subframe back up all right well from the bottom side we are pretty much all set oil pans in subframes in power steering pump belt back on trans line is resecured uh, we've got the lollipops back in uh, temporarily until we order the new ones. I'm going to actually leave that reinforcement plate off for right now. One, just so I can check for leaks. Um, I mean, they don't recommend you driving without it. Uh, you know, I'm mostly just going to be running it here in the driveway, uh, not really taking it around town or anything. So I think we'll be all right. Um, got the new level sensor in, uh, put a new crush washer on the drain plug. So really... Uh, we just need to lower her down a little bit, fill her up with some oil, start her up, and check for leaks. All right, so we got everything back together. All, everything under the hood is all set. Oil's in it. Dipstick tube is fastened. Airbox is in. Underneath, everything's buttoned up. Uh, like I said, I don't have that reinforcement plate in place, and obviously the belly, plans, belly pan is not going on. One thing I thought was kind of funny is cleaning out the belly pan. If you guys know these cars, you know exactly what that is. That is part of the oil filter housing gasket. So someone definitely has been in there. You can see it should not be plastic. Uh, so it, it was definitely a need when uh, it was done. I didn't see any signs of leaks there, but uh, it's good to know that someone has done it in the recent past. So let's grab the key. And so let's start her up. So the interior is still kind of torn apart from uh, working on the window regulator in the last video so excuse the mess that power so what we're gonna watch make sure that the red oil light doesn't stay on that's low oil pressure uh, make sure that the oil light goes out 
that means that we fixed the uh, low oil level sensor, which we replaced. So let's uh, give her a fire. Light should go out in just a second as it pumps up. Yep. And so far, nothing with the uh, low oil light. So well, that's awesome. So I said it. Uh, definitely a pretty common problem on these cars. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off and we can get it back on the ground. We'll get it out of the garage real quick. Let's just uh, take a quick peek, make sure that there's no major leaks on the ground. And nope, nothing. So, should have everything back together good. Uh, I didn't get to do the rack boots yet. Obviously we still have rear diff to do. I gotta order those uh, control arm lollipops. And I'm just debating whether do we just put control arms on it too and some tie rods. I mean, we're in there, might as well. So I'll probably get that stuff in order. So let me, I'm gonna drop this down and then we'll pull it out. All right, so driveway Jenga back. We got the black car back inside of the garage. Uh, she's back outside. Just gonna order some more parts tomorrow. She needs a bath real bad. These trees have been uh, pollinating all over everything. It's uh, turning everything green. And we'll put the interior back together. Uh, like I said, I think I got someone might be coming down and take a look at this. So, I mean, it's not finished. We got a couple little things yet to do, but uh, should give them a good idea of the car and where it's at, what we're doing with it. You can see all that pollen. Look at all of it, it's so gross. Learn the hard way, you do not leave windows down in this uh, time of year because, yeah, hold inside your car, we'll get full of pollen so anywho i'm gonna cut this one here appreciate y'all watching make sure you like and uh make sure you subscribe too um channel's grown pretty fast i'm really really happy with the growth and uh, all the comments so thanks again everyone and we'll see you next weekend